I'm Peter Brown, and you're watching Football Miami TV's Local News. Luis Suarez, how do you feel about that name? By now, I'm sure you've heard that Inter Miami has offered a four year deal to the Uruguayan striker. Suarez will be 33 next year and has scored 25 goals or more in each of his seven seasons. Has David Beckham successfully lured the Barcelona player to Miami? I don't know, but it sure is fun to speculate. It's awesome to know that we have owners with deep enough pockets and interest in investing that money into our hometown team. You don't see that up in uh, New England with their deep pocketed owner who seems to get in trouble. Suarez would instantly become the biggest name in MLS and the new king of Miami. Now that Dwayne Wade has retired, Suarez would have no competition. Actually, he has double the number of Twitter, fo Twitter followers than D. Wade. He is a star power that Miami will eat up. In my opinion, he'd be great for any new team, especially in a town like Miami. Just think of what he could do in MLS. Would he score another 25 each year? Even if he didn't, it would be a win for the marketing side of Inter Miami. Luis Suarez can really sink his teeth in the Miami market. He would chomp his way through MLS defenses and really take a bite out of MLS. Is he hungry enough to prove himself in Miami? All we need to do is sign Crest or Colgate as a sponsor and Suarez can leave his mark in South Florida. Okay, I'm done, I swear. Rumor is Inter Miami has also begun talks with Messi for the 2021 season. Imagine Suarez and Messi both playing for the Herons. This is just too much fun to think about. Uh, you know, in all seriousness, it's amazing that we are even able to have these conversations. It hasn't been easy for Beckham and company, and they have been the butt of many jokes. But in the end, Inter Miami will hopefully have the last laugh. Rival MLS fans, bring on your jealousy. Bring on your hate. We have ownership that's willing to spend. Do you think Suarez will play in Miami? Let us know. In other Inter Miami news, last Wednesday, Jorge Mas turned into the city of Miami the first draft of the lease for Miami Freedom Park. The 99-year lease will have annual rent payments of no less than $3.5 million, which is based on a third-party assessment of the land. In addition to the lease agreement, Inter Miami delivered a community benefits agreement that's pretty impressive that gifts $5 million for the city's Riverwalk Baywalk project, $20 million for park maintenance and free access to the soccer fields at Miami Freedom Park. Those are those fields on top of the parking lot. Pretty cool. That's a really strong first draft, but you could count on the commissioner's coming back to Inter Miami and asking for more. Moss is confident he'll get a unanimous approval, but I'm confident it will take a little or a lot more. Last week, we asked about what MLS journeyman you would like to see, because as we know, the whole team can't be made up of Suarez and Messi's. My suggestion, however unlikely, was Kyle Beckerman. Eric Thomas, had some great suggestions as well in the comments with Ozzy Alonso, Ike Opara, Tim Ream, Kendall Watson, David Guzman, Ignacio Piatti, Benny Philhaber, and Chris Wondolowski. Great suggestions. What this shows is that Eric is already invested in MLS. You need to get invested in the league now as well. Get to know the players that we will be competing against or cheering for. Ozzy Alonso is currently 33, but as a Cuban that knows the league, gritty uh, player, Miami fans may just love this guy, even if he is getting a little old. Phil Hobart is a few years younger and has struggled to find a steady home in recent years, but he could be the type of journeyman a new team needs to build on. What do you think of Eric's suggestions? Let us know. The Women's World Cup kicked off this weekend, and I'm sure you were glued to your TV just like I was. How do you like the U.S. national team in this year's tournament? Can they lift a fourth World Cup title? With the World Cup starting, it makes me remember 
the year when we had a professional women's soccer team playing in Boca Raton. In 2011, Dan Borslow, the owner of phone tech company Magic Jack, bought the successful Washington Freedom and brought them to Boca Raton to play in the WPS. That team was stacked with talent. Players like Christy Rampone, Lindsay Tarpley, Shannon Box, Abby Wambach, and Megan Rapino. It was so much fun to watch this group of amazing and talented women up close at FAU soccer field. Small field, fans get to be really close to the action. Magic Jack started with a perfect record in their first month, but finished in third place at the year's end. Owner Dan Borislow became the joke of the league as he battled the league over everything. He was accused of unprofessional behavior with his players and failure to pay bills, just to name a few. The league infractions that he piled up from the lack of ambulances to not enough seating to the lack of signage was so astounding. I mean, he just didn't care. He made up his own rules. His battling the league was so devastating that the league ceased operations soon after. He was banned from the league, then the league folded. Want to have some fun? Google Dan Bo Borislow, Magic Jack Soccer, and fall down that rabbit hole. You'll get a laugh. It was fun while it lasted, but now we could still cheer on Megan Rapino in what could be her final World Cup. Where will the U.S. finish? I don't know. I think they can win it all, but maybe I'm just a homer. If you enjoy what we're doing here, please take a second and like this video and subscribe to this channel. Thanks for watching, and we will see you next week.